Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Baron and this is your Brain on Books and today I want to talk about the beautifully bizarre novel that is Sorrowland by Rivers Solomon. Now I haven't done a dedicated book review in a little while and it's not because I haven't read anything great. You know, I've actually read a lot of really, really good books recently, but for me to talk about something at length it has to be something that excites me, something unique, something that I feel is not being covered enough on BookTube. And for me, that is absolutely Sorrowland. This book is a recent release and it deserves your attention. It's a fast paced, atmospheric story that genre blends so much that I would almost say it's kind of modern weird fiction in a lot of ways. And it handles some really important social commentary and it injects kind of some supernatural elements that I've never seen before. This is something that stands on its own. It does unique things, it's not derivative, and it is absolutely something that you should pick up. So I'm gonna get into what I liked, what I didn't like about the book, but real quick, let's just go over the premise of this story. So you start out with a young female protagonist named Vern, who is living in a complex of religious zealots called the House of Cain. Now the House of Cain is kind of a, a cult group where you can't really leave and they kind of prey off the people that actually live there, even though, you know, of course they present themselves as being self-righteous and everything else. So they worship the God of Cain, which is the true God for all African Americans and is separate from the evil white god who is typically in all Judeo-Christian religion. Now, one thing that becomes immediately apparent is Vern goes through some traumatic experiences within this compound and wants to flee, and she does exactly that. She takes off into the woods. Now, what is unique about this is at this point, she is pregnant with twins, and at, you know, in full-term pregnancy, she gives birth in the woods to two children, a boy and a girl, and tries to stay away from the influence of this cult on her own. Now, immediately, that's already the setup for something interesting. You know, you can have a good thriller just based off of that. But what happens is Vern starts to go through this transformation with this, I don't want to spoil, thing that requires quite a big, you know, suspension of disbelief that I've yet to see done before. And it's just cool. It's interesting. It had my attention right off the bat. And it creates just for a very well done story that did, had twists and turns that I never would have expected at all. And it just wanted, I just wanted to keep turning the page. I, I don't even know any way else to say it. Um, this is a book that you will blow through fast. There's no doubt in my mind. It's about 350 pages, but it's so engaging that this, this is a couple day read at max. So what does this book do well? Well, first off, I mentioned it does social commentary, and I think the way that River Solomon handles it is beautiful. Now, I love social commentary in my books, but I'm a little bit picky about it. You know, I think there is a big difference between illustrating the profundity of a unique experience for an individual and kind of just marketable inclusion that a lot of books fall victim to and they're kind of unapologetic in the way that they handle it but the way river solomon does this is just it's just graceful it's it has a lot of taste it was thought provoking and it kept me engaged throughout the story without taking away from the narrative at all. I felt like it enhanced what was going on and it created a lot of good context for supernatural, fantastical elements in a way that I've yet to see kind of at all. You know, there's not a lot of books like this and that's one of the reasons why I think this is worth picking up is it's just not going to be the same repetitive stuff that you've read a thousand times. It, it is so weird and it is weird in a great way. So another thing she just does really well is character development. Now the main protagonist of this story is very complex and, and really shows a transformative experience um, for obviously the character herself, but kind of to represent what's going on for marginalized groups in society today. And there's a lot of push and pull in this duality for different things that we typically don't see. So I'll give you an example. I'll try not to spoil too much because there's a lot that I think are, you know is going to be shocking as you go through this book. Um, 
But w- one example is, you know, Vern starts to fall in love with women. There's a lot of queer experiences in this. However, she also has this very traditional maternal role in the story. And the way Solomon is able to kind of show both the value and shortcomings of this tradition and progressive ideas at the same time is just masterful it's so thought-provoking and really really cool um and also she really shows how Vern is a victim of her upbringing in one sense she is beyond competent in areas that most people in society are not and yet she has all these shortcomings and kind of the things that we take for granted on a day-to-day basis um, another really, really cool level of complexity that she puts in this character that creates for some kind of pivotal moments that you would not expect. Um, so another thing that I just really loved was just her general writing style. This was atmospheric and there was so many lines that showed wisdom beyond her years that I wanted to go back and reread. You know, I don't typically tab books or highlight things in books, but this was a story where I kind of felt like maybe I should because there's stuff I'm going to want to go back. But I realized this is a short book. I'm probably going to read this again. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, But there was a ton of atmosphere that's injected in this and it kind of felt... I guess the closest comparison I can make would maybe be Neil Gaiman um, to where it's kind of, I would say she has a lot of restraint in the amount of words used, but yet those words are very effective of pulling you in to a point of focus that kind of creates the entire vibe of what's going on in the scene. And she does that very well. So if you like things like Neil Gaiman, um, I think you'll enjoy Sorrowland overall. So Let's kind of get into the things that I didn't love. And the big one is just the plot. Now, I know that's kind of weird to say, but I don't think, even though it is a kind of a thriller, that the plot was really that important. But there was times to where I felt like it got a little bit lost, a little bit disjointed, where it didn't have clear focus, but it had a satisfying conclusion and the payoff was worth it. So it's just one of those books you got to stick with it. The themes are enough to carry the novel the characterization is enough to carry the novel and like i said the payoff is absolutely worth it so i think i'm just going to leave it at that Uh, i do want to say thank you to sarah from sarah reed she recommended this book to me and i just went into it blind off her recommendation alone and it was a perfect fit for me this is a book that i once again it deserves your attention go pick it up uh I actually went back and forth between the physical book and the audio book. The narration on the audio book is amazing. And when I got it, it was on Audible for like $5. Try it out. It's it's cheap. It's accessible. The narration is great. And let me know what you think about this. So until next time, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. And I hope you pick up this book. See ya.